Hi, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created and set up Spring Boot project in IntelliJ IDEA, right? In this lecture, we'll see how to connect our Spring Boot application with a RabbitMQ server. So, so far, we have RabbitMQ server, which is running in a Docker container, and we have Spring Boot project in a IntelliJ IDEA. Now, we need to connect our Spring Boot application with the RabbitMQ server. Once we do that, then we can go ahead and create a queue exchange and binding in a Spring Boot application. Once we do that, then next we create a producer and consumer. All right. So in order to establish the connection between the Spring Boot application and a RabbitMQ server, we're going to use Spring Boot auto configuration. Well, Spring Boot auto configuration, it helps us to reduce a lot of configuration. Okay. So we get a connection to our RabbitMQ broker on port 5672 using default username and password of guest okay we can use default you know username and password as a guest to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq server and in order to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq broker we need to use these properties spring.rabbitmq.host equal to localhost spring.rabbitmq.port5672 spring boot rabbitmq username guest spring.rabbitmq.password guest so these are the default values basically okay and Spring Boot Auto Configuration basically, you know, uses these properties behind the scene to automatically connect our Spring Boot application with the RabbitMQ server. It means that we don't have to define these properties in our application.properties file because Spring Boot will automatically use these default values to connect our Spring Boot application with the RabbitMQ broker on port 5672 and uses the username and password as a guest. Okay. But remember these default values works whenever you install RabbitMQ locally in a development environment. Let's say if your RabbitMQ broker is running on different machine, then you have to provide these properties and you have to provide that machine IP address or the host name over here. Okay. So make sure that whenever you deploy your RabbitMQ broker or a server on production or in any different environment. So make sure that as per the environment, we have to you know provide the host name port username and password okay so these default things will work for local development but what if you want to deploy or if you want to set up rabbitmq broker in a production then you have to configure these properties and you have to configure these property values as per the environment right so make sure that you remember all these things in order to connect your spring boot application with the rabbitmq broker now let's go to Spring Boot project and go to application.properties file and here what I will do I will quickly paste these properties that is host localhost port 5672 username guest password guest. Now go to Spring Boot main entry point class and from here just run the Spring Boot project and let's see if there are any errors or not and there we go there is no errors it means our Spring Boot application is connected with you know uh, rabbitmq server which is running on port 506 5672 and if you comment out these properties let me quickly comment it and if you again rerun the spring boot application then our spring uh, spring boot application should have to connect to the rabbitmq server because spring boot auto configuration behind the scene uses all these default values to connect our Spring Boot application with the you know RabbitMQ broker. So let me run the Spring Boot application and there we go there are no errors. It means that our Spring Boot application is successfully connected with the RabbitMQ broker. Well once Spring Boot application connects with the RabbitMQ server next we need to create a queue exchange and binding in a Spring Boot application right. In next lecture we'll see how to configure queue exchange and binding in a spring boot application all right i will see you in a next lecture